13,300 pounds, the Montana 384 or 385 BR. They call it a bonus room. Don't call it a mid bunk, because if you do, the Keystone Goblin will come, I don't know, flatten your tires. I haven't figured that one out. But anyway, um, they like to call it a bonus room because it could be an office, it could be a den, it could be a bunk room. It has the loft above. But the touches, the updates that have gone into the Montana High Country series in the last few years, I think they have impacted this floor plan more than anything else. You've got that. Look at this. Huge drop frame storage. I love the camp kitchen. This is an exceptionally well-appointed camp kitchen on this thing with a big pull-out cutting board that actually fully extends out. It's like two and a half feet long. And those zero-G stable steps in addition to that six-point leveling system are going to make this thing feel like it's on a concrete pad as people come and go, so it's not going to jiggle jar your teeth all over the place. And what's interesting is whether you call it a middle bunk room, bonus room, office, den, loft, whatever, the focal point is not that middle room. Um, even though that's the classification here, the focal point is this rear opposing slide living room, the same kind of living space you get and like a full-time luxury couples camper you get here. And it's it's actually very welcome and needed because weirdly, bunk models which sleep the most people seat the fewest people because you have to sacrifice seating normally to get that uh, sleeping space. You don't have that problem here. And what's cool is you actually gain four separate sleeping zones. We have a trifold hide bed on the rear wall and it's skirted by household and USB outlets. So. It's very, like, you know, phone-friendly, kid-friendly, guest-friendly, etc., and it's larger. It's a three-adult-sized seater so that if you want to, you know, sit multiple kids down or if you really just want to sit a bunch of adults down and pivot that TV the other direction and have a neat little conversation corner on this No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center with, you know, the theater seating directly across from it, well, you could do that. Now, between all the, the, the color, contrast, accent lights, the, the what they're calling the Modern Maple Edition Wood Tone Package here, this thing has a beautiful open feel. Um, like, but any any area where there's going to be a lot of kids, like seating and traffic, it's all a little bit darker there. Whereas your kitchen stuff is all a little bit lighter. They really broke it up very nicely. It's it worked very well in this floor plan. Like, you know, we kind of took a year off this model, and when I saw the updates, I'm like, that's it. It's got to come back. This is this is absolutely a standout offering right here. Now, from the top down, first we've got a 12 volt rain sensoring max air fan next to that. Uh, I love the pendant lights. I love that little kind of mesh coating on them. Now, that's a 12-volt ceiling vent fan above your kitchen cooking area, but you also have a 12-volt ceiling fan up here for airflow, and you don't see the square, so you won't hear the air with that whisper ducted air system. This has two 15K centralized air units for 30,000 uh, BTUs of cooling, plus you have a 16,500 BTU uh, electric heat pump built into this rear air unit. That's in conjunction with the 5120 BTU electric space heating fireplace below that entertainment center. And you've got yourself a recipe for a ton of heating that won't eat up your propane. Similarly, this RV has 12 volt tank heaters to help keep the RV, you know, functioning if the temperatures drop down. And those being 12 volt can operate in transit. Now, all of the windows open for airflow. And I lament greatly that I had to pull the nightshades on these, but the sun coming in through the windows, it was just murdering the camera. I was not able to get any sort of good footage for you here. I really wanted everyone to get to, to see the, the fabrics, the decors, the details clearly, so I just had to kill the windows. I think you get the idea, though. If you're watching our videos, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're intelligent folks because you obviously have good taste, but <laughs> I could be biased. My wife will probably uh, have contention with that, but neither here nor there. Uh, moving on. Over here, uh, on that, remember, all these windows open up all campsite windows, so you've got that panoramic kid capture kind of viewing. But even the hallway window and the main entry door, you can see through those. Um, over here, you've got a couple different seating arrangements. We will bring this RV in with the uh, booth setup that you see right here, as well as a freestanding table and chairs. We will tend to build it both ways. So if you don't like this seating arrangement, don't worry, we have a different one for you. However, this is another one of those updates I was not fully aware of until this RV arrived here. Usually when you see a Montana at a display, it has a table and chairs. And I, I shouldn't be surprised though that they've done such a good job with their dining arrangements. So they did, the, they did a dinette different. That's the easiest way I can say it. That's a hardwood table 
So, I mean, it's it's solid as all get out. It brackets against the wall, so it's not going anywhere. And it's a no knee knocker. There's no like pedestals that are gonna smash your legs, which is the number one complaint you usually have with dining arrangements. Then there's storage below the seating, but that cool indirect accent lighting that they're doing, good gravy. It looks it looks like space age. It looks like it's hovering. It's awesome. <laughs> of course, it folds down into a sleeper, and that's actually where this weird leg thing comes into play. There are two hinged legs here that actually hook to one another. So when it's in dining position, uh, you have them kind of snap together like you see, but when it's in sleeper position, you use that shorter leg so it actually has center support on the table. God, they thought of everything. Not an accident, not an accident. Montana's the number one fifth wheel out there by volume. They're just so good at what they do. So moving past those six and a half foot tall walk-in slides, taking a look over here at the kitchen. As if the living area wasn't awesome enough, the kitchen is just <laughs> flooded with fantastically easy to access storage space. And it starts right over here. Uh, you've got huge cabinet capacity above the TV, but notice how the TV itself swings out. I mean, it can swing out like crazy. If you wanna make a face straight toward the dinette or even in the kitchen, obviously you can, but there's storage behind that. There's wide open space there for big, tall, awkwardly shaped stuff. Not to mention the fact that it makes it much, much easier to get back here to the back of the screen to be able to plug in like Roku sticks or Fire Sticks or whatever, you know, Blu-ray type stuff. Um, the, uh, I don't even know where to start over here. There's so much good stuff going on in the kitchen. First of all, I dig the symmetry of this. I love that you have a cabinet above and equal size cabinets on either side of that convection microwave. And as we come down, full wall backsplash in your cooking space with household outlets on either side, with countertops on either side, with storage on either side, with a drawer below. I mean, every part of this is awesome. Easy reach appliance outlets is something they are really fantastic at in the, uh, really in a lot of Keystone products. Um, speaking of which, right below that uh, light accented countertop, you can see some more uh, plugs right there. But as we walk past here, quick note, this is a, a 384 BR. The 385 would have an electric only uh, fridge that requires an inverter um, or, uh, for transit use, rather, if you're not plugged into park power. Whereas this is a gas and electric fridge, so it gives you an auto changeover backup in the event of power loss, which is, we've also found that if you're traveling, this fridge seems to hold up much, much better for our clients. Not to mention the fact that the residential refrigerators, good luck finding people to work on them. It's basically a nightmare. It's, it's, it's one of the worst experiences that we've had buyers ever go through, and it's one of the biggest reasons that we don't uh, really slant toward them very much here at Halet RV. Um, over here, our cool little kind of coffee corner. Just It has a matching backsplash, just like our stove area. And then again, just the, the break up, the whole wall is just storage, and there's a motion light inside that pantry, by the way. And you may have noticed how all of our countertops were solid surface. Plus, below that, we've got a like a farm sink and a prep sink with nothing but storage below that island. And when you pop those flush mount solid surface covers off, you start to go, oh yeah, okay. So what everybody else calls the big sink is what's on the right. In Montana, they have a big sink and a farm sink, which is like a big, big sink. <laughs> and I don't wanna forget, there's a countertop extension leaf over here so that you have extra little prep area when you want it. I would say it'd be a good spot to put a wastebasket under it if it weren't for the fact that they already gave us a place for a wastebasket next to these uh, <laughs> drawers to the floor over here, plywood full extension drawers going all the way down. So, uh, you know, you've got drawers in the little coffee bar entry area, you got that big pan drawer below the uh, stove, kitchen drawers right next to where you'd want your utensils. I mean. Everything is in a good logical place. Now we start moving toward the hallway. And as we do, on these stairs, you'll see uh, a centralized vacuum system. Also on the left, that little black thing next to the central vac is a motion sense light. So that'll kick on either when you walk in the door or if you're going up and down the stairs so you can actually see what you're doing. And something else that's really cool here in the hallway, it's easy to miss, and that's almost a good thing. It's a neat little storage pocket, but our control panel, all our important switches and stuff, they're out of sight, out of mind. So kiddos with their little fingers, they're not gonna accidentally like turn on your water heater when you don't want them to, or like turn on your tank heaters and mess anything up. So in here in the bonus room, as it's important that we call it in a Keystone RV, 
You've got a, uh, a big fold-out sleeper sofa. We'll see that in just a second. So this could be used for sleeping space. But the way that they have this arranged with this awesome storage capacity and very obvious that it's kind of very desk-like in here, it's a fantastic, uh, flexible middle bonus room area. And I, I get why they call it a bonus room, but I, I think that we can just call it a mid-bunk, don't you? <laughs> Now, the sofa, when it opens up, it uses every little inch of this space it really possibly could. But that's also one of the reasons that it's kind of uh, adult size versus just kid size. And the area over here that could be a desk you see has TV hookups. So that could be a neat little kind of middle den nighttime entertainment area. But you know another thing this floor plan could be really cool for? Some couples, you know, they need separate sleeping zones. Maybe one of you has sleep apnea and you kind of keep the other one awake at night with your chainsaw kind of noises. You know, I'm not immune to a little bit of snorage myself from time to time. There's a little bit of Snorlax action going on. But that's kind of one of the cool things about these mid-bunk bonus room jobs. A lot of different flexibility to it. Especially when you can use the loft above, not just for sleeping, but for storage as well. Starts with that safety gate on the left, and that is at the, the tallest area. So I've seen some mid-bunks where the ladder access, which is where I'm standing, is like on the lower deck instead of the upper bathroom deck, which doesn't make any sense to me. If there's one spot you... Do, I mean, if you're going to fall, you don't want to fall from there. Not that I want anyone to fall. You get the idea. Now, neat thing they did here. They gave you two individual mattresses, which I think opens up some neat possibilities. Uh, this could be bed space. You could split them and have a little bit of a separated space. You could push them together and have one big space. You could put a totally different mattress up here if you're so inclined. Or you could just take these things out. You see how it's fully finished? This could easily just be a cargo attic. Plus, neat little thing they did right here. That is a, uh, uh, they do have an, uh, well, I'm sorry. That's your air vent. And that's an air intake so that you always do get good airflow going up here. They really did a neat, smart job of that. Now, um, again, they put the ladder where it's the, the shortest height ladder it could possibly be to be able to get up to the cargo, bed, bunk, sleeping, whatever you want to call it area, as opposed to that really tall space. And pardon the clanking there as I just slide it out of my way. Montana pivot door. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's not really hard to exchange out if that's not your jam. But this bathroom is pretty much standardized. Like, this is really about the same bathroom you'd find in a lot of these things. And it, for good reason, it just works. you got plenty of room in front of that porcelain foot flush stool. We have awesome linen space or, you know, bath storage in here. And you can see you've got that extra cabinet above. One piece, seamless molded shower with corner seating area for safety and individualized comfort. And we've got uh, sealed edge thermal foil counters in here. And I like how they kind of keep that sink out of the way because it really maximizes the countertop space you have in here. Once again, drawers to the floor in this Montana. And that big tall door is a place where it's wide open for a wastebasket. And you've got the medicine cabinet here so you can see yourselves before the neighbors see you. Not that I care when I'm camping. When I'm camping, absolutely don't care what I'm look like. Spider-Man PJs, I'm walking the dog in public. I don't care. I'm camping, man. <laughs> Up top here in the bedroom. This is, I am sweating it because it's hot in here and I'm greasy, so I apologize. But again, we're camping. I think you get the idea. Plenty of walk-in height here. There's no area where, like, there's something that's going to bump my head. There's always plenty of headroom in here. We have built this with that second air conditioner, so we do have, uh, again, 30,000 BTUs of cooling power. Montana's use a little bit deeper bed slide here, and I forgot to turn one of the lights on. I knew I would do that, but that accent wall looks tremendous. And, then, and since the upper deck is plenty tall, they made the slide as tall as they could, and this thing, it feels huge in here. Um, and that complements that 70 by 80 upgraded king bed as well. There is full storage below that, which is going to be good for that, like, maybe extra blankets or something. Not your everyday stuff, which is what you're going to use in this front closet. And, of course, we are stackable washer-dryer ready for those who are so inclined. Although most people uh, are just going to use it as pure storage. But that's fine. You know, it's got the flexibility. That's the whole point of this floor plan. It has all sorts of options and flexibility. You can do whatever you want with it. Some people don't care about a bedroom TV. Some do. They leave you the option to mess with it. And they give you a big dresser across from the bed here. So uh, whether it's the closet, the washer, dryer prep, storage under the bed. I mean, you've just got tons of space in here. And that lighter, what they're calling modern maple uh, edition wood package that they have in here. It makes this room look and feel larger, kind of like the bathroom. The bathroom looks and feels bigger than ever before, but they didn't revise it. It just looks lighter. 
As we step outside, taking a look at our entry door here, notice we have applied the optional slide awning package to this. That's something that we've just started doing to all our Montanas. The pricing has become much more affordable on those and the extra protection and the, the shading that it provides to our slides to help with heating and cooling comfort, pretty effective. You may notice there's a second awning right on the face of that slide and a six and a half foot tall 30 inch wide door, meaning a residential sized door. It's a taller, not just wider, but taller door so you don't bang your head on it. We already saw the stable steps in that kind of floating position before we stepped inside, but I want to zero back in on this camp kitchen now that we have more time to really dedicate out here. I love that uh, pull out grill. And I mean, it's a real like grill, you know, it just, it, it works a little bit better. And one of the things I was saying is that this little cutting board prep area here, that is, that's not a small thing. But I like how it has its own little dedicated travel slot right there. Similarly, they give you a little finger tab so you can uh, open and close the galvanized rolled steel kind of camp kitchen grill situation. Inside of here, there's handy little, uh, you know, little cabinet for your spice rubs. There's motion sense lighting up in here. Household outlets. You want to turn this into a margarita station, you can. But here's why this camp kitchen is one of the better I've seen on one of these big fifth wheels. This is on a drop frame which is why it has this just epic pass-through compartment over here but they extended the drop frame to include the camp kitchen if they didn't do that the camp kitchen would have to be that much higher you see that trim line it would have to be like a foot taller and at that point you're grilling your face off and you're splattering grease all over your shirt and whatnot you know you'd be cooking your eyebrows well now it's functional this makes sense it makes tons of sense you can see these big doors have magnet holdbacks although they are prepped if you live in a windy zone um you can uh, put gas struts on those they leave the little cleats on them so you don't have to accidentally like mess up your door they they do the the scary part for you that way if you want to just add the thing you just pop it in the doorway and you're good to go might as well look at the pass-through storage below those magnet holdback slam catch doors you can see that uh you've got a uh, a fully finished pass-through area here you don't see like any raw exposed material more of that motion lighting outside tv hookups just monstrous compartment i mean ideal frankly you know something i never really thought of until i looked at this here especially this being potentially bunk worthy like bunk usage you could easily lay bicycles down in there i mean it's i've never thought of that before but you could stack and rack some bikes in that thing if you had to uh montana is and has been the number one selected fifth wheel of full-time rvers for something like 17 consecutive years uh you know obviously they carry a full-time rving warranty with them as a result one of the other things uh you know this is a big rv it's great for setting up at destinations but you know 13,000 pounds pretty long you got to be able to get it there which is why the uh, Road Armor Pin Box and Suspension 1-2 combo really comes into play to give you some smoother ride and handling so that you can enjoy the experience of getting there almost as much as being there because this one's this one's very good once you do reach the uh, destination. Neat little things, uh, really, most of Keystone does with their slide outs. You see the same stuff done on Cougars. They have this really rough textured slide wall. And that's not uncommon. But... The uh, vertical trim here has a little inversion groove on it so that any water that washes down the wall hits that and beads up and drips out. They also fully finish the bottom of their bed slide. This is an area a lot of brands overlook and a lot of buyers don't even realize they should be looking because what will tend to happen on some slides, not all, but some brands, they won't treat the bottom of the slide so water washes down the side and it will just kind of wick in for various reasons and it will slowly wick up through the Darko into the, uh, the wood decking of that bed slide and cause it to rot from the bottom out. If you watch my older videos of like older uh, Fleetwoods, for instance, they were kind of notorious for that happening because slide out, uh, fifth wheel RV production hadn't been around long enough to realize that was going to happen over time. And that's what I like about Montana. I can guarantee you, you could find a dollar cheaper fifth wheel somewhere with basically the same layout. And on paper, it'll say, wow, we have all the same features of a Montana, but we're cheaper. Because there's little details like the treatment of the underside of that bed slide that they will miss. Montanas aren't built to just last until the warranty expires. They're last until you're done camping, although hopefully that's not until death do us part. Uh, <laughs> uh, the fully enclosed privatized docking center is just one of various ways. This is and has been uh, you know, hot, cold camp capable since 2005 and counting. Then little things like the 
little sewer hose caddy right here so that you can keep your black tank stuff away from all your fresh water stuff. It's just little smart details like that. Um, the uh, six point leveling system I mentioned, the smaller high countries will have a four point, but the big ones like this have a six point because it's so long, they really want you to have that extra stability when you get there. And look at the gloss on this skin. I mean, literally it has like a mirror-like reflection upon it. Um, as we uh, phase back here, you'll see a couple neat things, like most fifth wheels. We're back up camera ready. This has uh, reverse travel lighting, which is ever since Jayco introduced the J-Smart lighting, every manufacturer has like, hey, we've got a, a neat thing back here too. And frankly, I love that they're doing it. I don't even condemn them. I'm glad that a safety feature is being included on more and more RVs in the mainstream instead of, it's become the rule, not the exception. So that is awesome. What is a cool update here, is this doesn't just have a two inch receiver hitch. This has a 3,000 pound towing hitch with four way wiring harness and safety chain hooks, which is something you don't normally find on a big fifth wheel of this class and category, but I think you're going to start finding more of that. Here's the rub, bub. It's long. Most states uh, have length restrictions that aren't going to allow you to tow a lot behind this, but. What I don't care about that, the reason I don't care about that is because if it's got a 3,000 pound towing limit, if all I want to do is throw a little bike rack or something on the back, it's sure as heck going to be able to hold it. And we are a little bit close to this little Catalina over here, which, <laughs> not a small camper, but it doesn't look nearly as big sitting next to that big, beautiful Montana. What I do want to point out though, is you've got some awesome campsite kid watching windows over here. And again, you've got those dual power awnings giving you maximum patio coverage. They've lightened up the skin, which, I mean, these were already hot, cold camp rated, but the lighter skin will organically reflect more sunlight and keep it cooler. But this polar white roof membrane will do the same. Also, you can see uh, to the right side, that little black job, that is a solar prep plug. If you want to, you can go just solar crazy with all the canvas coverage that you have on this thing. And Montana does offer a, uh, a solar package. We've done informational tours on that here at Halid RV. So if you'd like to look into the Montana solar package or if you want to kind of a la carte your own, there's all sorts of different ways. Solar is kind of what size fits you, not what size or one size fits all. Oh man, I'm dehydrated, hot, sunny, beautiful day. But as you can see, we have a sea of inventory here. If it ain't this one, or if you like the idea of a mid bunk or bonus room or whatever you want to call it, but maybe not this one, or you want something different, you want a comparison, we have plenty of options for you here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else, so give us a call, because we do it all. Take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping, everyone. There goes another little one. Holy cow, we are cooking right now.